Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson number 113, we'll take a look at an anti-pattern in architecture called the cart before the horse anti-pattern. To describe this anti-pattern, let's start with a conversation between a product owner and a software architect. The product owner states that we're starting up a new business initiative and need a new system to support it. What type of architecture should we use? And of course, as we all know, the software architect responds with the obvious answer. Well, microservices, of course. And this is how the cart before the horse anti-pattern emerges. The cart before the horse anti-pattern is making architecture decisions before we even have any sort of information or basis for those decisions. One of the best basis for those decisions is from our book in the Fundamentals of Software Architecture. Um, in that book, um, we took all of these different architecture styles and rated them based on one to five stars on various characteristics. Uh, which translate, by the way, and are extracted from business needs. Uh, one star being the fact that that architecture style doesn't support uh, that characteristic very well, whereas five stars, it does. And so using this kind of information of the characteristics of an architecture extracted from business needs and the type of application we're building uh, really does give us a justification and a basis for those decisions. As a matter of fact, uh, let's do this and see how to avoid uh, the cart before the horse anti-pattern. So let's go back to our conversation where the product owner asks, you know, we're starting up a new business initiative and need a new system to support it. What type of architecture should we use? And now to avoid uh, the cart before the horse anti-pattern, uh, the software architect says, well, first let's sit down and discuss what type of system it is and what your business needs are. And let's see how this conversation goes. Well, we want to automate our inventory management process. We cannot seem to keep enough items in stock, but we also don't want to overstock things either. And as a matter of fact, we need a system that continually monitors orders and optimizes the stock. Maybe using that machine learning stuff I've been hearing about. And so the software architect responds, I see. So this runs in the background and interacts with the stock replenishment system in order to order more stock. Got it. And so what's on the mind of the architect now is background processing and also fairly large data volumes. So let's keep going. And the software architect says, so what else can you tell me about the system? And let's listen in on the conversation. Well, the CIO wants this new system in place before our peak season starts. And the software architect responds, but wait, wait, but, 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 but wait, that's in six weeks. And so now what's on the architect's mind to help with this decision-making process are time constraints. Architect says, anything else? And the product owner states one more thing here. Yeah, we want it to feed into our existing dashboard reporting system so we can see how and what it's doing. Oh. And also, we may want to tie into the order archive system uh, to look at past orders for historical trend analysis. Hmm, says the architect. So it appears it ties into a lot of systems. And that's all about integration. And so now, with this conversation done, the architect's, architect has extracted not only the nature of the application, but also some of the business concerns, especially those time constraints. And now we can go back to this star rating chart and take a look at what's important for us to help us make a decision. For example, integration is important and it's going to have to be a fairly simple solution in order to get it done in six weeks. So we take a look at the nature of a back-end process and also that simplicity and realize we don't need all of the superpowers of distributed architectures. And so I think a monolith seems to match a single deployment unit, uh, this kind of system for this analytics. But which one? So we take a look at integration. That's important to us. And we notice that mm, it's not really well supported in a layered or modular monolith from a structural standpoint, uh, but is 
from a structural standpoint within microkernel. And as a matter of fact, microkernel still has that simplicity. And so given these factors, I can justify that we should probably use a microkernel architecture. And as a matter of fact, now I can model it to make sure and see that this might be the right kind of system rather than microservices. So that core system is where all the code resides. Uh, that can have all of the machine learning code for analytics and algorithms for doing that and also interact with a fairly large scale database. This is going to be a lot of volume of information. Now, each plugin in the microkernel architecture can act as an adapter so that I can plug in modular wise all of the adapters, for example, the ordering system adapter to be able to extract the orders to do analysis on those. As a matter of fact, the adapter used to actually communicate with the stock replenishment system once I have the information about how much stock to order for each item. Also, I have that reporting dashboard need. I can add a plug-in component to interact with that system as well as the order archive system. As a matter of fact, this solution gives me all of the capabilities of adding future system adapters in so that if we want to integrate with another system, I just simply create a plug-in and plug it into the core system for those analytics. As a matter of fact, doing this basically can take that cart before the horse anti-pattern and using those techniques and change that and reverse that anti-pattern to the horse before the cart. Being able to make my decisions based on some sort of business need and justification. All right, so uh, we do talk a lot about the cart before the horse anti-pattern in our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, as well as all those star ratings that you saw um, in this short lesson. Um, and also, you can get resources from my website and specifically um, Software Architecture Monday, where all of these lessons are housed. And so this has been Lesson 113, Cart Before the Horse Anti-Pattern. Uh, stay tuned in two weeks for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday. Uh, thank you so much.